Oh, thank you so much for remembering to do that. We are recording tonight in case so that we can make this available to others who are not able to make this and are wanting to participate and be more involved and in the know on Bellevue Airfields Park Master Plan update and what it means from Splash Forward's point of view and how we how we are looking at to this exciting moment. I am going to share my screen. And uh, you know what? I'm going to stop share for just a minute. I do want to quickly introduce to you who is on the call from Splash Forward and from our consultants. So um, you can wave your hand as I do this. From our Splash Forward board, we have Grace Chu, and she's here, and we have, um, she is our accountant, and Lorraine Massey, uh, she's our secretary, and Katoya Palmer, board director, and we have Julie Frank, our treasurer, and um, Stu Isaac is our aquatics consultant who's been with us from day one. And we have a couple of new consultants with us, both Sarah Morris and Chris Gorsmo from Copper Strategic. And thank you for the quick wave, appreciate it. <laughs> it's good to see you, thank you guys, appreciate that. Okay, now um, I know folks are gonna join us again, but we are gonna get started. I'm gonna share my screen back again. Okay, and I'm Susan Papalardo, but you all know me. <laughs> okay. This is tonight, August 2nd, and we'll get to why August 2nd is an interesting date today, um, a little bit later in the presentation. Um, great, I have a quick poll that I would like to run, and let's see how effective I can be at selecting my poll. I want to just say, okay, I'm going to launch this poll, if you could take this, this is, where do you live? Or do you live in Bellevue, neighboring Eastside City, Seattle, or you outside King County? And we'll see who's on the call. Great, thank you for participating. We, as you can see, we have a majority of folks from Bellevue and a few from Seattle and somebody even from outside King County. Thank you for joining us. Great. Um, and I am gonna go ahead and end this poll and then, oh, I get to share results. There's, there we go. There's your results from that poll. Great. Um, okay. I am trying to figure out how to, how do I do my next poll? Once I've done that poll, I'm not sure how to go to my next poll. Okay, I have one more poll to run. And I wish I could figure that out if somebody knows. Is it the learn, learn to Swim one? It is. Can you launch, I launch it for you? Please do. Thank you so much. Is it launched? It should okay. be. It should be. OK. This is for a quick poll on where did you learn to swim? Was it in that backyard pool? Was it in a public pool? Was it in a swim school? Or do we do you not yet know how to swim? And was everybody seeing that poll? Yeah, great. Okay. There's our results. Ah, look at the majority in a public pool and a couple and one in a community pool. Okay, cool. Thanks for sharing. All right. We are going to move on here. Um, there is a handful that hasn't been introduced to Splash Forward before. I'm going to give you a quick highlight on, on who we are and point you to where you can learn more. And then we'll give you a, brief, a very brief update on, on the work we are doing. And then we are going to jump into the main topic for this evening and just do a quick recap. Quick, quick, quick. We're going to do a recap of the meeting that was held last week for the kickoff for the master plan. Uh, update for Bellevue Airfield Park and just give some framing around that from the perspective of Splash Forward as the nonprofit um, that is partnered with the city uh, in the goal to bring a new public aquatic center to the city of Bellevue. And we'll talk about what was heard and then really encourage you to ask questions as we go for clarifying and we will make sure we answer questions towards the end and we'll describe what's coming up and our call to action to everyone. So 
as you most all of you have uh, familiarity with us, um, we are a passionate group of people uh, believing that um, our communities will be stronger and healthier when we have new public pools and our our incredible need to serve our community through this will is part of the infrastructure, the social infrastructure that makes our communities the places that you want to live and be. Um, so we know the world will be better with public pools. And we are doing we have worked hard over the past four years to build the partnerships um, and to to really begin this whole relationship of the private public private partnership. So for more details, plenty on our website. Just for perspective on how far we've come, um, you can see here, you know, the, the beginning of uh, uh, public pools in our King County was in the 1970s. And as you move through major milestones in the city's history of Bellevue, 2009 was really the beginning of, of envisioning what could be next for the city of Bellevue with a public pool. And then in 20, uh, 2017 is when Splash Forward started forming and we became a nonprofit in 2018 formally and worked with the city alongside them in a feasibility study, uh, a, a feasibility study update to the 2009 work that was done and to really scope and refine and put a greater lens to what's next for the city of Bellevue with public products. And um, in last year, 20, uh, 2021 is when uh, the milestone of having a preferred concept plan as well as a recommended site and the endorsement to proceed from the city council to explore Bellevue Airfield Park. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but it's um, the catalyst of Bellevue Airfield Park um, master plan update, which was in 2012 is you know really looking at this public aquatic center really kind of was the catalyst for opening back up the master plan and here we are this year so a brief update of where splash forward is right now um, we are at a time of growth and change and investment in who we are um, and how we become the trusted uh public or sorry private fundraising partner to the city of bellevue and really getting our foundation um, built out and ready for when we want to assess the private fundraising capacity and begin a capital campaign. So we've invested, and I'm going to share with you in a little bit here, um, the, the consultants that we are working with to build out our next moment. And part of our work um, is, you know, we're, we're able to do this work through private fundraising. And to date, we have raised um, $364,000 just, uh, you know, to towards our goal, overall goal of 500,000. And, um, you know, that's, you know, over the course of about four years. And Amazon recently added to their um, support for Splash Forward with a, an additional donation of $40,000 that we received this June. And last year, um, if you recall, we received 100,000. So they've been a major factor in how we've confidently been able to move forward with investing as a private fundraising partner. Our high school lifeguard training program has just literally taken off. Um, we have trained, trained, we have supported, I should say, uh, 66 students to become lifeguards. And they've, they've become lifeguards in a range of facilities across the east side um, and in Bellevue. And we've supported the city of Bellevue in a, in a very, um, significant way this summer with um, seven lifeguards and more coming that are, are working for the city of Bellevue. Yes, every day I have new registrations. And so we're every month we will be supporting um, lifeguard training. And this next week, um, we are holding our first ever introduction to aquatics and water safety summer camp um, that we are partnered with the Boys and Girls Club of Bellevue and Rainier Athletes and Samina Swim Club where we're providing swim lessons as well as water awareness, water safety awareness and activities, um, not only in the pools, but at the lakefront with um, the, um, the Washington State Parks um, Education has a paddle program that we're gonna do a day of kayaking through their, um, a grant they've received. 
So this is targeted at middle school students with little to no swim skills and um, creating just you know, a great opportunity for the kids. And we're gonna keep growing that moment. And we're really try laying that foundation for our outreach with our engagement with the community across Bellevue at, um, to support the master plan update process. Um, I'm going to jump to our next slide. I will speak to the slide, but the consultants that we've we've hired, um, just to give you, and some are on the call. And you've Sarah and Chris are both with us tonight. Um, Cole is on on vacation this week, and Brittany actually starts with us in September. And these are our, our three consultants that we've just hired as of July, and working with them to, you know, our top focus is board growth, organizational growth, and fundraising, planning, preparedness. Um, and you know, grant prospecting and really putting ourselves in a position where we can accurately assess uh, private fundraising capacity. And we look to begin a fundraising feasibility study sometime in the mid to late um, 2023 next year. And we wanna be ready and these, and these folks are gonna help us grow where, from where we are now. And this is just a, a recap of our core uh, relationship with our city of Bellevue and our partnership. And I think Pam joined us tonight and Pam's on the call, um, but Pam and Furman and Ken Kroger, if you were on the community meeting, um, they led that community meeting from the parks department, uh, parks and community services. And we've been, Stu Isaac, who's also here on the call, Stu and myself have been in regular meetings over the past, couple years with Pam and Ken as we work towards our vision of a new public aquatic center. All right, now we're at the part where we're gonna begin to dive into what the process looks like, where we are right now, and framing really a little bit more around what happened last week at the community meeting. And this whole process kicked off because the city of Bellevue agreed to move forward with assessing a public aquatic center on the site of Bellevue Airfield Park. So that master plan that was in 2012, it really, um, you know, it, it really was, I think I go into the history of it a little bit later here, so I'll hold on that thought. But, um, you know, our big picture was, you know, this feasibility study, the need has been well understood, scope of what could be a, um, for the city of Bellevue in terms of the, the scope of a facility that would meet the community's needs has been well thought through. Um, and that we, you know, we are now at the point where we're assessing a potential site. And so the master plan update process is that process to assess this site. And as the city shared last week, this is their slide um, that shows the community meeting call is today, that was last week. And there's three total public outreach moments, meetings that will happen over the course of this. Um, the third meeting, I'm not sure exactly where that will land, but the second meeting um, will be in this, you know, this fall uh, with the goal of looking at um, site concepts and feeding that information into our parks board uh, and city council. Um, the goal for, um, you know, as we, as you gather community input, really taking that input and sharing it with our city to then really understand where, where we can, whether or not the site um, can support um, the, a new a public aquatic center. Um, the council um, has the ability and, and, and will at, um, some juncture review. And then obviously the next step after community input um, is gathered and presented and shared and understood is assessing whether it's um, the moment to move forward with the next phase of assessing the site as a potential site. And that next phase would potentially be where you do a state environmental protection act study. And that's typically referred to as the SEPA study. And so that is a pro a, a, also a public process and that would potentially um, begin in 2023. And as it's laid out here, following that process 
it would be when um, there's still more community engagement around that, but that process ultimately ends with a proposal from the parks board of a master plan proposal that the city would review and decide for adoption. Um, and if it, and we will know by 2024, 26 timeframe is if the plan includes an aquatic center, that would be when the design phase for that aquatic center would be potentially begin. I'd like to take any questions now because um, you know this this kind of framing. I, I just you know last week that there was questions around that. All right, I'm going to move forward. The goals of last week's meeting were really to um, provide the history of the master plan for that was from 2012. You know that was 10 years ago. Priorities have shifted, um, and to really reawaken that conversation that neighbors and parks users had to say, what are the priorities here in 2022? What are priorities and what are preferences for what you wanna see at the park? And looking at the full menu of those options for what can um, what the park could support and knowing that the full menu couldn't eat everything on the menu and what, what are the priorities? And so that's the beginning of this process was started last week. Um, and the next phase would really dig into more details on what potentially um, will be proposed. And the overall feedback that was not overall, but sort of some of the feedback that was heard. Um, and this is through a very targeted set of folks that we knew were participated last week. Um, it was a little unclear on that goal of that meeting of what was, you know, that what was um was it being was it to get community input was it to help influence parks uh or the city council um and so there's there's more more clarity that will come through the process in, a, in the next public meeting um and obviously we could run um let's see it, there was some just the first time mechanics of operating a poll um that was an online poll and getting that set up um, and some of the um, just sort of that flow of that meeting, um, there was a desire to have it run more efficiently. Um, you know, neighbors heard neighbors, um, and some voices were dominant in some of the breakout rooms. And I think if ever if anyone was there, they knew that there was an entity that was very well organized in every breakout room. Um, <laughs> we'll speak to that in a minute. So there were some dominant voices, um, but the breakout sessions really did allow people. Uh, they they were largely respectful, neighbors heard neighbors, and I think that's always a good thing when neighbors hear neighbors. Uh, overall themes of the meeting, and I'll say that roughly about 78 attendees were at the meeting. Um, overall, there was a desire to have a balance between active and passive usages of the park. Um, various voices speak to that, and I'll, I'll summarize a few of those in a little bit here. That was an overall overarching theme. There was support for an aquatic center. There was support for pickleball um, for the for a dog park, which was kind of mixed that I'm now getting more feedback on. Um, it was definitely dominant in the breakout room I was in. Um, the preservation of natural areas, that was a theme that, that was that also came through. And um, largely a lot of there was a lot of neighbors, you know, the dominant attendees um, were neighbors that live around that park. Um, Sports playing fields was a, a interestingly was not voiced as a high priority with those on that particular call compared to the 2012 master plan community input that was received. Um, uh, in terms of neighborhood concerns, I think it was consistent from 2012, you know, noise, light, traffic, environmental impact. Um, those were similarly voiced. Um, and there was some clarity needed on the scope of an aquatic center that the city is considering. So there was the, the aquatic center as an entity was described was not, you know, we'll give that a little bit more context tonight um, to show the concept plan, but that was not the intent of the meeting. So it wasn't expected to be laid out at that meeting, um, but there was some questions on that that got voiced. There were organized voices. Pickleball was very organized. And I think <laughs> everybody knows if you were a Parks Board member, if you are in the city, uh, if you were on that call and in a room, I think pickleball um, was well heard. 
Uh, similar top preferences to 2012, right? Uh, that um, active recreation, developing the site, including active recreation, preserving the open meadow, off-leash dog area, um, and the aquatic center. And the screenshots on the right are from the actual presentation last week. The slides will be available ultimately on the city's website, but these are just screen grabs from the meeting. And I'll go into those a little bit more. Top questions heard, what happened to the 2012 master plan and why didn't it get executed? There was some framing that, um, you know, the sum was given in some of the breakout rooms, it was really well given, uh, but that came up a couple of times and just really understanding so if there was a master plan, why are we revisiting it? And you know, really the, 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 the moment to look at this aquatic center and whether it can be decided there was the catalyst for um, reopening the master plan. I'll go into a little bit more of the history to answer that question in a, in a, in a few slides here. How did we get to where we are now with evaluating this? What happens you know, with the current Bellevue Aquatic Center and what about the impact to the community pools like Phantom Lake and Samina? It was not lost on the audience that this is you know, within blocks. And so what does it mean for them? Um, are, we, are we jeopardizing them? And um, I'm happy to share that we're in good conversation with both Phantom Lake and Samina. Um, and we have um, from the early moments speaking on how, what the, what's envisioned at this new aquatic center, how it impacts programming, um, opportunities that it has for these um, community pools to expand what they do, to, um, to uh, look at opportunities, new opportunities. Um, so that's been, that, those have been really healthy conversations and we look forward to continuing that. <laughs> Number one question, I had to include this, how do I access the online poll that did come up? Oh, um, and what does the city see as the funding mechanisms and partnerships for an aquatic center? Um, that was heard in some of the feedback we gathered. So these were polls that were run. And again, these were just, you know, introductory polls to just understand, hey, how do you use the park and what else? Um, and how do you currently recreate? And, you know, what are things you do? And, you know, from walking being dominant uh, from the users on the call, it's off, you know, it's through the pandemic, walking and outdoor park usage is high, right? And I think that's, new behavior patterns are, are here to stay. Um, and in terms of what else do you do, uh, you know, where else, where else do you currently recreate in the neighborhood, right? And getting a sense for you know, the, those on the call, what other parks are being used. And what levels of activity would most interest you in a park site, right? Um, and that, that full range, active, passive, or balanced. Clearly, the balance was heard. And what would you, what active programs would you mo would most be interested to you? And you know, you got the full range there from what was offered in the aquatic center um, was definitely well supported, um, and playground and water play uh, also well supported. And in terms of which passive programs. Um, trails, you know, that is always parks number one requested um, uh, activity to continue to have. We all love our trails and Bellevue's got a wonderful trail system. And picnic areas is also there and natural areas. So again, you can just see that dominance for passive usage of, uh, on the park site. The full range of programming opportunities was presented to those at the meeting and that included, you know, all forms and then the really to foster discussion around these. Some breakout rooms uh, dominated on some of these topics, but um, the full range was there. And um, this is just a flavor. Um, the, <laughs> the Parks and Community Services will do a wonderful job at recapping what happened at the meeting and giving great lens to that. This is just a sampling of what was heard in some of the breakout rooms. Um, but there was a total of six, and we look forward to hearing that we'll, at the next public meeting, they will give a report out on, on what they heard, um, but really heard everything. I'd like to kind of highlight what is not known yet. I think that was framing that was is also helpful uh, in terms of where we're at now with uh, aquatic center exploration. 
you know, are all the capital partners identified? No. Do we know some of our some of them that will be potential capital partners? Yes, right? The city, the Bellevue School District, um, King County, Splash Board as a private leading the private um, partnerships. There is more to be added to this list. And that's we're at the beginning phases of exploring our partnerships. Um, the refinement of the concept plan to the site and capital partner needs, right? We haven't, that's not, the, you know, that's a future moment to refine the concept plan that has been presented to date um, and tuning it to both the site and to potential uh, capital partners needs. The public funding mechanisms, what are all those public funding mechanisms? Well, there's a range and those will all be explored with exactly which flavor of and how many ways of public funding sources will be, those are all to be explored um, and developed. And how is Airfield Park used by all city residents? This is a great question, right? Do we know today who, who are the full range of users of the park? And you know, if you know if the neighbors that currently use it today, you know, how does that park grow and evolve as a, you know, if it, as it gets developed? Um, to be a lar larger city usage. And what is known? Uh, well, the need and opportunity for a new public aquatic center is well known um, in terms of this is not, uh, the need and opportunity is not exclusive to the city of Bellevue. Uh, most major cities in King County uh, um, are on the cusp of exploring. Uh, how to meet aquatics needs. And we have the King County Parks uh, Aquatics Facilities Grant Program that is supporting the exploration of aquatics facilities. Um, so you'll see, um, you'll see a lot of movement around Bellevue and, but really having an understanding for how these potential new aquatic centers fit to the larger picture of the community's needs. Um, it, it is an ecosystem and they all do. And that's one of the um, things that Splash Board is, is trying to add value to, to our surrounding communities. Um, what is known, right? We do know the concept plan. I can share that with you to just give you that brief highlight for those that aren't as familiar. And that the city council's preferred site is Bellevue Airfield Park. And that's the reason they're asking to explore citing an aquatic center there, the impact, the community's impact, the environmental impact, let's understand it, is it viable? Um, Splash Board is the private funding partner. We have signed an, a memorandum of understanding with the city earlier this year. Those are, those are clear things that are known. And just to highlight the benefits of this site, right? It is a park, right? There is a, a real, opportunity to have indoor outdoor usage scenarios on this site that are like no other um, in our parks. And um, we're excited to be able to be exploring the full range of those opportunities and look to provide some, um, some more depth to trends and you know opportunities around indoor and outdoor usage. Um, it's in East Bellevue. Uh, that is an area of where park development and parks and community services will be focusing investments um, to bring more opportunities to the East Bellevue. It is our most diverse neighborhoods. It's accessible by foot, bike, bus, light rail, and car. Can it be more efficient on some of those fronts? Yes. And will there be opportunities? Yes, it's for development. Um, and it's owned by the city of Bellevue, right? This is, as Pam uh, Furman highlighted in the community meeting, it is the largest uh, park, undeveloped park that can support an aquatic, new public aquatic facility. Um, so that's exciting. And it is connected to Robinswood. So when we think about Bellevue Airfield Park, we have to think about Robinswood Park at the same time. Those are connected parks. There's a community that usages that's, that are, um, can look at that holistically. And it's central to schools as well. So the history of Bellevue Airfield Park, it was acquired by the city in 2002. It was an airfield, operated as an airfield up until 1983. It does contain a landfill that was used between 51 and 64. Um, so uh, in the 2008 parks levy um, that was passed, 6 million was allocated to that park's development. Um, so 
there is a moment in waiting for that 2012 master plan. There was not enough funding to begin that process um, back in 2012. And it was named Airfield Park as part of the master plan process. Does anybody know what it was named before? Um, it, has, it was, I think, called East Bellevue Community Park. Um, and right, so we all know we're at this moment now. These are screenshots from the meeting um, where you see the landfill where it's positioned on the site. You also see the traffic flow uh, by foot and by vehicle in the south, southwest, southeast corner is where your traffic flow is from vehicular. Um, your pedestrian traffic flow is directly through the neighborhood access points. And as you see, which I think is great to highlight, you know, the, the perimeter that is residential versus the perimeter that's office and business usage. It's a very unique setting in terms of a park that um, has, I mean, you're, you have that real by foot access eas easement as well as, as traffic that's on two separate sides. Okay, so I have <laughs> information and I don't yet know. Um, and I'm, I know we ha may have council member on the call here, Jennifer, but um, today is a deadline for whether or not a parks measure will be included in the November 22 ballot for the city of Bellevue. This has been in the making um, since uh, January uh, this year. Um, and this is a an $85 million parks measure that would cover a range of, of, of investment in neighborhood parks, in acquisitions, in emerging spores, in really developing the Bell Red Wolverton corridor um, to really begin to continue filling out Bellevue's moment as a city in a park. Um, so this is a screenshot from a presentation through council. Um, and this is the proposed range. And um, so a parks levy, um, so I don't know if we have a confirmation. Jennifer, Jennifer's giving me the hand. Jennifer, go ahead. <laughs> Is this, are we in? Here we go. Yeah, I'm trying to adjust this. I'm sitting in the easy chair. Um, yeah, we did pass um, the ordinance last week to put the levy on the ballot. It is made up of an 85 million nine year levy um, plus that's at 15 cents per thousand. Oh, okay. Plus right. a five cent per thousand maintenance and operation component that will, because if we build it, we want to maintain it. So that's why we have the maintenance and operation. 10 million um, will be towards those uh, recreation active facilities, which does include potentially the aquatic center. And remember, we still have money from the last park levy for Airfield Park as well. So that's park funding um, for right now. We've appointed the pro and con committee. I noticed that the con committee chair is on this call, um, but uh, we also are talking about other ways to fund parks. Um, and we will be talking about the potential of adding park impact fees to um, our uh, slate of revenue options, probably early next year. Um, impact fees for those that are not aware are fees that developers pay when they add new capacity. So if you tear down your house and rebuild it, no impact fees because there was a house there before, there's a house there after. If you tear down a house and put in an eight unit apartment, then seven units are new, that's new capacity. So um, we're talking, so it's the, one of the ways that growth can pay for growth. Um, that's something that we'll be discussing next year as well. The council green lighted that, but for your purposes, the park levy, yes, it's a green light. Um, I hope everyone gets out and votes in November. Um, I know there's some people who strongly, strongly support this levy on this call, including myself. So um, make sure you vote in November and vote yes for that. Thanks. Jennifer, and thank you so much. Happy to jump in, but that's a, you said you weren't sure where we are, so I wanted to provide that to you. Oh, it's fantastic. That's exactly what, um, yeah, you're getting the latest and the greatest moment on yeah. that. So thank you. I really appreciate that. It's awesome. Um, so uh, I will move us forward here. And I, I just, this is a quick refresh on the scope of the concept plan that was presented to council last October at the council meeting um, where we recommended this concept plan along with the park staff and uh, park staff also recommended the airfield site at that time. 
And this is the rough scope, right? It's got both the wet and dry sides of a, of a multi-purpose uh, aquatic center. And it's, you know, 130,000 square feet. And in 2020 dollars, that's 125 million. And there's a very, a lot more data underneath for how to get to where we are with putting these numbers on the screen there. Um, a lot of research to understand the current, you know, the scope, the, you know, how do you, how do you stop? How do you program? How do you, what are the rates? What are the membership looks like? Um, it is a comprehensive look um, out of the feasibility study to come to this point where we're recommending this concept plan be the scope for the city of Bellevue's needs and to meet those needs. And this was a rough, uh, there is no preconceived layout, but this is a rough, so you can see the components um, in visual form. And we will be exploring and tuning that. I did include this slide just so you can see there is public and private sources to really emphasize that this is a public private partnership and how we go about the next phase if we get to the point where we are looking at siting this on Bellevue Airfield Park. Um, these would be, you know, we would we would be assessing all of the capacity for the various um, places that we can. Uh, Entities are where we will begin to assess private funding, you know, everything from, you know, individuals and donors all the way through major corporate donors, um, philanthropic gifts through grants and foundations. Um, and so that's our scope as a private nonprofit. We'll be fully assessing that capacity um, so that we can accurately, accurately reflect what we can raise. And the city, and we are a partner to the city as they explore their public partners um, to, to bring the public funding side of this. And there's just to highlight that there's not all in one place that funds come from. The city doesn't just sort of write a check. Uh, it is, this is a, a, you know, a compilation. There is really a stacking of sources from which these um, funds will come. We have the potential to secure a $5 million King County Aquatic Facility uh, grant through the grant program, that's a potential, right? Um, and there's other entities with which we will explore. There's other partners um, that will begin, institutional partners to explore. Where are we at our next steps is to really uh, support the city in the process of this uh, master plan update process. Um, we will explore those indoor and outdoor recreation trends and opportunities and synergies and identify, um, you know, how those programmings, you know, to really make sure when we engage with our outreach, we're talking about the benefits of this site, right? And the benefits that an aquatic center brings to it. Um, we will expand our community outreach and engagement um, and develop ourselves, right? Get ready to be um, the private fundraising partner that we, um, that we have committed to with the city of Bellevue. And recruiting community members for different roles throughout, you know, our public engagement, our community engagement. We will need those that help us electrify the community, help bring us in conversation, help create awareness of the process. Um, is really be a listening entity to hear the response, hear the as the community looks at this as a whole. And then I will just what's next to just highlight what's next, right? The slides from the meeting, this, there'll be a survey from, not our meeting, the slides from the city's meeting last week. Um, and there will be a survey that the city is going to include to continue to gather input from the community. Not everyone can show up to a community meeting um, and there's those that do and can, but there's a lot more input that the city would like to hear from, um, from residents. And, and just so you know, if I can interject, uh, this information is posted on the city website and Susan has posted in the chat for this meeting, the link to the website in the city. So if you want to take a look at the uh, chat room, it may make it a lot easier to find that link than going to the general city's website. So it is the link is in the chat. Thanks, Stu. Appreciate that. And the um, I'm, you know, the, ultimately the slides will be posted there in a survey. Uh, they're not there yet right now. Um, community meeting number two. The date is to be set. It is expected to be in September and in a perfect world. It will be right around before the Parks Board meeting that we know is on September 13th. Um, 
and it will be in person. Um, and that location TBD and that date TBD. That will be when the, con the consultants that are the city has hired Walker Macy that uh, facilitated last week's call, they will present several concept plans, two to three, and that will explore what uh, of those programming pr um, options, what that could potentially lay out and look like on the site and what could potentially be some, you know, hearing the priorities that were heard and what could, what option are there? Some will have the aquatic center on it, some will not. Um, public input at that time on those site elements and preferences will be, that will be good discussion. That will be a very healthy discussion and we look forward to hearing the community's discussion around that. After that, uh, the reporting out to the parks board um, for their understanding and questions and probing. And then, um, you know, ultimately taking that to the city council for their input and review. And if anyone ever has any input, we obviously encourage full participation and encouraging others. Obviously, uh, we want um, everyone on this call to be able to tell more people to participate. And But input can be taken at any time on the city's website. And our call to action tonight is to just help us create that community awareness, right? Share our story. Um, invite us to community meetings, help us make introductions. Um, and we do call for everyone to, you know, we call the greater you know, community to help us create participation. Um, one thing that we're going to be focusing on as the school year starts is really engaging families and students and bringing and making sure their voices are, are, are heard during this process. Um, and follow us on social media. We do keep everything up to date there. I'm going to open it up now to Q&A um, on, I'll stop share here, and I can always bring something back up, but I'd like to open up to comments or questions. Susan, do you want to launch that community engagement poll since it ties in with your I do. I do. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see. This is a question for everyone. How would you rate Splash Forward's community engagement to date? Um, and I think, the poll, is the poll running? Help us it should know. be. It should be running, okay, I see it, great. Let us know how we're doing. And there's two questions. So we've got that question and there's another question is, how would you like to help Splash Forward create community awareness? Great, thank you for taking the poll. And you can go ahead and share that out. Great, we've got some work to do and we're also, we're, we've got both, both, both ends of the spectrum there in perception and uh, needs improvement as well as excellent. And I don't know enough to rate, fair. That's fair. Keep keep following us along so you can help give us feedback as we go. Um, and how would you like to help us? Um, great. It looks like we got a range here of helping us make introductions and sharing information that we appreciate very much. And volunteers, take those. So let us know who's, who said they'd like to help us volunteer. Great. All right. Well, um, and there's one more poll that I would love to run. Um, as we look forward to the next community meeting, and um, maybe let's wait and run that when we get a little, uh, take some questions now, we'll run that one afterwards. Thanks, Lauren. Great, I'd love to hear comments, questions, and um, and I know if you wanna type it in the chat versus, but I would encourage just unmute yourself. Um, you could raise a hand or unmute. I think we're a small enough forum here. And even if it's just um, expressing that uh, you're happy to be at this point where we're, we're actually talking about a potential site, because this is kind of a pivotal moment where we haven't been in the past. And if anybody wants on the call wants to share some perspective um, from their point of view on having been a community member for a long time and would like to just share 
your perspective on this process, that's fine too. All right, no brave soul with a question. <laughs> Uh, let me ask a question of the people that are on the call. Great. For those of you that are on the call and weren't on the um, the first community meeting, how many of you or any of you have comments about the way you use Airfield Park right now? If you do use it, uh, what activities uh, uh, bring you to the park? Because we love to get a sense of how people are using it now. I think that's an important part in community impact, uh, community input to the overall master plan update. If you're all quiet, am I to assume that none of you use Airfield Park <laughs> as it exists now? Great. All right. Um, let's run a poll. I want to run that last poll. And it's fine if you don't use it currently. All right. This is a question. We're trying to provide some input to the city as they plan that next public meeting that will be in person. And we'd like your... Um, your thoughts on how that might look for community members to have more opportunity to share their voice and their input. So an ability to sign up and speak for a couple of minutes on a specific topic, um, record a video postcard with input, um, send a photo postcard, or fill out, you know, as you walk in a sticky, an, a real live sticky postcard and you actually physically go and put it up on a wall um, under a category with your thoughts. Um, you don't know, but you like the, you know, you like the idea, that's fair. Um, or if you have an idea and you want to email it to us, just send it to us at info at splashboard.org. I'm looking forward to an in-person meeting. <laughs> uh, and I think we may parallel what the city is doing with a follow-up, our, our splash board next meeting, we'll, we'll, we'll go for an in-person meeting. And if anyone out there wants to give us free access to a, a place to do our community meetings, we will take it. <laughs> Typically, historically, the challenge is finding places to host our community meetings. Great. And then run a little more that people are still filling it in. Yeah, no problem. Halfway. Great. Why don't you go ahead and share that out? So we've got a range. That's great. Thanks for the feedback. But uh, being able to write it down on a sticky note and putting it up on a board. Super. Thank you. Well, this does bring us to the conclusion of what we were wanting to share with you tonight. Um, if you didn't go to the meeting, I hope this gave you a sense for what happened at that community meeting. Um, if you, um, you know, as you reflect on that, if you come up with other thoughts for how to help us encourage more participation, um, we'd be happy to hear that. Um, we are going to begin to try to outreach to organizations in the area and to encourage those to participate. All right. Well, thanks for, thanks for joining us. We appreciate the time that you took to come and join us. And we, uh, we look forward to further engagement with you. But um, yeah, I would love to, if anybody has any last comments that you'd like to, or you, brave enough to unmute. Everyone on this call is, is amazing and I'm really thankful to have you in our wings. Um, so. I would, I would encourage sorry, this. Uh, I would encourage everybody to continue to stay involved in the city process. I think it's really important that the voice for aquatics be heard and then also please get involved and pay attention um, for the park levy this fall. Those are my last words. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, the parks measure. Uh, that park levy, um, we, we, you know, we will hope that the community um, fully embraces parks. I, I think the city has fine history of supporting their parks and their parks measures. And um, this, is, this is a time to invest in infrastructure. It's um, really important to the city and to the community. 
Great. Well, we uh, I'll just give one more minute if folks want to unmute. Can I call on somebody? If, if you get called on by me, will you unmute? <laughs> I would like Dave Hamilton, would you unmute and just introduce yourself as a Parks Board member? Did he just pop off as soon as? No, no. I'm here. Still there. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Would you just briefly introduce yourself and say a few words? Sure. The hard work yeah. that your team has been doing, your Parks Board? Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, great to be here. Always good. I'm the chair of the Parks Board here in Bellevue, um, but always good to get uh, as much feedback as possible. So anywhere and everywhere I can go to hear from folks and hear what's important, that's really of interest to me. So um, yeah, all these little tidbits kind of help fill it in. And uh, I think so far, it's been a super process and uh, learned a lot and seems like a lot of good support. So um, I look forward to being a part of the rest of it. And looking forward to hearing from everyone. There's certainly a lot of opportunities to uh, just have your voice heard. So uh, this is as, this is as good as any, but there are a lot more as well. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. We have Victor Stover. Yep. Yeah. Great. Hi. Um, uh, my camera does work. Okay. I'll just add. Um, I hope the city is going to do more public engagement than just having meetings you know, community meetings in the evening tend to attract a, a limited uh, demographic that's now representative of who uses Airfield Park now and who would use it in the future. So uh, I hope the city will, um, you know, do outreach at the park during different times of the day, different days, that would be the best way to understand how people are using the park, uh, in my opinion. And then, um, yeah, I think anyone who does community engagement knows that meetings are, you know, uh, not necessarily representative. You know, parents who have kids in the evening are not likely to uh, attend a meeting in the evening. So, um, yeah, just looking at alternative uh, ways to reach people, I would um, hope the city will do that. So thank you. Uh, you. Happy thank to be you. here. Thanks for coming. And I think that feedback's spot on. Um, I think that's wonderful. I really love the suggestion of getting out in the park at different times and different, different days of the week. You'll see different patterns. Um, that's something that I know we've, we've briefly talked about on our and um but i think that's and especially in the summer right this is a great time and, for usage and victor i uh your point is so well taken and you talked about how to better reach the people that are using the park what i'm also concerned with is how do we better reach the people that aren't using the park and what would get them to use the park and you know that i think will be a very important part of this master plan particularly as we look at the impact an aquatic center may have on that park so that's more of a challenge that uh, reaching those that aren't using the park. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always tough. Um, it, it takes it takes effort. It, it mm -hmm. really does. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I, but I agree. And I'm glad you highlighted, Victor, the, uh, you know, parents with kids. Um, for those of us that have been down that path, it's, yeah, it's challenging to find those, you have you have opinions and you do want to include, get um, included. Um, so finding out our ways, how to best to do that. And I you know we'll be putting a lot of thought into engaging the families that are, there's a lot of schools right near this park and that's going to be a very important um, demographic that we um, want to, we want to hear from. Hello, Kelly. I'd love for you to chime in. I have not brought up Kirkland in this. <laughs> I thought I should introduce myself since I'm lurking back here. Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, Kelly Curtis, Kirkland City Council. And the reason I'm lurking is we are starting an exploratory committee in September to look at um, putting an aquatic center in Kirkland and putting a measure on the ballot. So I'm very interested in this process and what happens and thought I'd come join the meeting and hear where you are. So thank you, Susan. You're welcome. Yes, um, we're excited for the city of Kirkland's process to begin uh, um, exploring an aquatic center and a parks measure, right? Uh, yes. In the year of 2023. Um, and this committee that's forming um, 
were helpful to play a role in that and in, and provide um, uh, more support and, and exploration in that process. And I should add that we will be posting applications for the committee very soon, and we're not limited it to Kirkland residents. So anyone who live, works, or plays in Kirkland is welcome to apply to be on the committee, and we expect to have about 30 or 40 members of the committee. So, so I got to plug Kirkland while I was here too, so thanks all. <laughs> No problem. Like I said, it's an aquatics ecosystem. So our communities that are exploring this in Kirkland and Bellevue are not alone to the north. We have um, we have um, Bothell and um, Edmonds is potentially, but Shoreline and uh, Kenmore. Um, and we have, you know, to the to the east, we've got Sideview Parks, which is further along the path on this in the new aquatic center. Any new aquatic center that gets built in King County is water that will soon be consumed. <laughs> All right, I appreciate the conversation that um, we've had. If anybody wants to chime in again, um, welcome. All right, I appreciate all of your time and we look forward to supporting this as we go. And um, we're, we're excited. This is, this. I always will say that failures precede success and um, we know regionally that we've been down the exploratory path several times and we know that we've gotten this moment to, uh, at different stages, but this is our opportunity for success. We've never had a greater opportunity to succeed for building public aquatic centers. Parks departments don't get to do this often. It's usually once in the lifetime of their tenure. So this is a huge investment that influences uh, many generations. And um, yeah, there's nothing else that we'd rather be working on. And so we're gonna get, we're gonna help push this across the start line. All right, high five to everybody. Um, thanks for coming and um, you guys are awesome. And we'll see you, we'll see you down the road. <laughs> thank you. Very good. All see right, you. thank you.